Hi everyone. Okay, so um, before we get started on the comparison between the COC and the POP, I just wanted to put in this little insert. So as you can see, this is the Queen RuPaul. For those of you who don't know, you have to go watch RuPaul's Drag Race. It is the best show on television. Anyways, um, so <coughs> the reason why Mama Ru is up here is because um, I was watching RuPaul's Drag Race yesterday and um, I was watching all my favorite queens and shout out to Heidi and Gigi Good who are my favorite queens of season 12. Um, anyways, um, and I was watching it and then I was thinking about this video and filming it and I was thinking about how in the videos I may have been a little bit, in the previous two videos I think I was a little bit heteronormative in the language that I used um, and I was thinking about a lot of transgender women, not that drag queens are all transgender, just so you know, <laughs> um, a lot of them are actually cis men like RuPaul, um, but I was thinking about a lot of transgender women and gender non-conforming people who might be coming in to, um, to a doctor's office and, you know, I, I kind of got hung up on the fact that contraception is to prevent a baby, which gets created by penis and vagina sex, but in reality, that's not always the case. Um, for one thing, heterosexual couples are not the only ones who benefit from contraception use. Everyone who is sexually active, no matter what type of sexual activity you are engaging in, could benefit from using barrier methods of contraception. Um, and in addition to this, people sometimes seek contraception use for uses other than um, birth control. Um, for example, as a form of menstrual cycle control or even to stop menses um, as in the case for some trans men um, and many other reasons so my point is that I wanted to put this here just to say that going forward um, I'm going to try and use more inclusive language that is not so cis hetero woman centered um, and so I just wanted to put this here as a reminder of my realization um, that not all women coming in for contraception advice are going to be firstly using it for birth control and secondly, not all of them are going to be um, cisgendered heterosexual women. So um, yeah, I just put that there and shout out to Mama Ru who is a queen and is always sprouting out words of wisdom, including this is the best one I, in my opinion, if you can't love yourself, how the hell are you going to love somebody else? Um, and she says that every episode and I just thought that that's an awesome thing to remember. Okay, so that's enough about RuPaul. Sorry, Mama Ru, but it's time to go. All right, so let's get into comparing these two different polls. So throughout this video series, um, I've created little characters that are meant to represent each of the types of contraception. Um, and this is just to help you remember some of the little details, but some of it's a bit silly. So, you know, take what you want from it. So let's get started. So our combined oral contraceptive lady is this beautiful lady over here. Um, I think her name is Carla, just because it starts with a C. And um, Carla over here is a working woman and she is she prides herself on how efficient she is at work. All her employees have a rating of only 92% efficiency, but she is 99.7% efficient. And 0.7 because she's also very accurate about statistics. Okay, so she's very efficient, she's very accurate with her work, um, and as you may have noticed, Carla does have a problem that she gets this terrible acne, and you know, it's, it's very embarrassing for her because, I mean, she's had it ever since she was a teenager, and it just doesn't seem to get any better. But, you know, she carries on, and her work is more important than sorting out her cosmetic issues. Okay, so... Um, Another thing about Carla is that she's just recently been married and she does hope to have children in the future, but she first wants to get ahead in her career. So she does not want to be having children at the moment, but she wants the option to return to her state of fertility as soon as possible in case she decides that it's the time. Then as you can see, she's got this cute little purple briefcase, but contrary to what many people believe, this briefcase is not actually meant for her work-related things, but she keeps a secret stash of um, 
pads and tampons and even spare pairs of panties because she just has the most irregular menstrual cycle and it's so heavy and she also keeps some pain pills in here because you never know when it's going to pop up and she's going to need an emergency you know pad situation so that's all about Carla so like I said it's a bit weird and long-winded but hopefully you'll remember bits of her story so as you can see here the combined oral contraceptive when used as it's typically used is 92% effective and under correct use, which is how Carla would use it, it is 99.7%. Now, um, there are no age limitations um, when it comes to using the pill, um, except that as, as the population of people you're going to be giving this to gets older, they tend to get a few more of those risk factors we spoke about, which would contraindicate the use of combined oral contraceptives. Um, and I think that's mainly the reason why after 40 years old, it does require a bit more careful follow up. There are no parity limitations. And then, OK, then the mechanism of action. So I thought I'd just use this picture just to explain the mechanism of action. Sorry if it's giving you second year PTSD, but it's actually very helpful. Um, so the mechanisms of action of the combined oral contraception are two part, but it's important to remember that there is a primary method and then other secondary methods that aren't as important. So remember that the primary method that um, the pill uses to prevent pregnancy is by preventing ovulation. The secondary things are that it thickens the cervical mucus and alters the endometrium. But remember, the most important is that it prevents ovulation. So if we look at our picture over here, um, in a regular menstrual cycle, um, outside the use of exogenous hormones, you have this increasing, so this red line is estrogen, um, and so you have increasing estrogen, which eventually reaches a peak, and that peak is what stimulates the peak of LH, and that LH peak is what stimulates ovulation. So when you're using the pill, you get a more constant um, supply of estrogen. So the estrogen level remains a bit more constant, like along this line, and so you don't have that peak. And without that peak, you won't stimulate LH and you won't stimulate ovulation. So that's how that works. Okay, then um, over here we have side effects. We've already gone through that in the previous video, so I won't go through it again. Then now non-contraceptive benefits. And this is where Carla comes back into play. So remember that Carla has her heavy periods. And the good thing about the combined oral contraceptive is that it is very good at regulating some cycles and also creating lighter and less painful periods. So that would be great for Carla and her situation. Then um, it also prevents or improves iron deficiency anemia. And obviously this is because of the lighter periods. So those are predisposed um, to anemia. You know that it'll prevent um, this extra iron loss through, through heavy menstruation. <coughs> Excuse me. Then um, it also does a lot of other things. For one, it decreases your risk of developing pelvic inflammatory disease, ectopic pregnancy, ovarian and endometrial cancer, and benign breast disease. Another thing is that it decreases the symptoms of endometriosis and of polycystic ovarian syndrome. And this is because it regulates the cycles. And one of the main symptoms of endometriosis and PCOS is an irregular menstrual period or a heavy menstrual period. So often the combined oral contraceptive is prescribed um, to treat these symptoms in these conditions. Then another thing which will be excellent for Carla is that it can improve acne. So um, I think this is also one of the reasons why a lot of GPs want to prescribe the combined oral contraceptive in young women because of these extra benefits. So a lot of young women who haven't had their period for a very long time um, might not have a regular cycle yet, which is quite quite a hassle um, when you don't know when it's going to happen. And also because a lot of teenagers have acne. So yeah. Then the next thing that's really important to remember is that there is no effect on protecting against HIV and other STIs. So if you're using the, the COC, you need to use it in combination with barrier methods of contraception. Then um, for duration of use, it's safe throughout your reproductive years. Then as with what Carla was wanting, um, your fertility will return without delay as soon as you stop the pill. Then, um, and we've spoken about the timing of initiation. So let's compare these characteristics to those of the progestogen only pill. 
So um, you've already met this lady over here, and I think let's name her Penny because it starts with a P. And um, yeah, you know her story. She couldn't take the combined oral contraceptive because all of those contraindications she had. And now she can take the progesterone only pill and she doesn't have to have any more babies while she's breastfeeding. Um, and there is her tear of joy. So comparing the effectiveness of the combined oral contraceptive and the progesterone only pill. So in non-breastfeeding women, how it's typically used, um, it has 90 to 97% protection and under correct use, it's more than 99%. So it's slightly less effective than the combined oral contraceptive, but when used in breastfeeding women, you have that combined protection that um, breastfeeding gives you and you have now the use of um, the POP and this gives you very, very good protection. So it's more than 99% effective. Okay, there are no age limitations um, and there is no parity limitations. Then the mechanism of action, now remember that in contrast to the combined oral contraceptive, which has estrogen, which prevents ovulation, this one just uses um, progestogen. So what it, how it prevents pregnancy is by thickening the cervical mucus. So that is its primary mechanism of action. Whereas in the combined oral contraceptive, it was its secondary method of mechanism of action. And by thickening the cervical mucus, it prevents um, sperm from entering the uterus. Then the secondary um, effect is that it can inhibit ovulation in 60% of cycles. So um, progesterone also has some effect on ovulation, but not as much as estrogen. Okay, then we've spoken about the side effects. I'm not going to go into them again. Um, unlike the combined oral contraceptive, the progesterone only pill doesn't have as many of the non-contraceptive benefits. So that together with the fact that it's a little bit less effective is probably the reason why people are most often prescribed the combined oral contraceptive as opposed to the progesterone only pill. Um, then as with the pill, the, the other pill, there is no protection against HIV and other STIs. The duration of use can also be used throughout reproductive years. You ought to get immediate return to fertility as soon as you stop the pill. And in the timing of the initiation, remember that in contrast to the combined oral contraceptive, where if you start it within one to five days after the start of your period, you'll get immediate protection. Um, and then if you start on any other day, you, would get, you have to wait seven days. With this pill, you can start any time in, in your cycle and you just have to wait um, 48 hours for it to take full effect. Um, and then remember that whenever you're starting any of these pills, it's important to make sure that you're not pregnant when you're taking it um, for obvious reasons that you should probably treat the pregnancy and not try and prevent pregnancy. All right, I hope that makes sense. So there's Carla and do we say that's Penny? Penny. So Carla and Penny and the differences between their two methods of contraception.